Welcome back to Arsenal News TV and today we're going to look at Arsenal's scary 11 if Raheem Sterling, Riyad Mahrez and three others complete summer moves. And with Manchester City's Raheem Sterling and Riyad Mahrez being heavily linked with Arsenal in recent weeks, we're going to look at a really scary 11 Arsenal could go with next season. And with Arsenal looking to be gearing up for a busy summer transfer window as Miklo Sessa prepares to lead a large scale overhaul of his playing squad ahead of next season, a number of top class performers have been linked with the Gunners as of late. So we're going to have a look at the Arsenal side that could take to the Emirates Stadium pitch next season if Miklo Sessa manages to land not one or two but five of his reports. To targets. So the first person in goal is going to remain as Bert Leno and he is one of the few players that are going to remain from the previous season and still remain as Arsenal's goalkeeper. He still divides opinions from the fan base but I think when Bert Leno is very confident when he's in the right mindset I think he's still one of the best keepers around even though we have made mistakes in the goalkeeping department we still have to rely on what we have chosen as a number one and that is in the form of Bert Leno and he has saved us before and I think he's still a decent goalkeeper so he's nice he takes us on to the right back position and when it comes to the right back it's going to be in the form of Tarek Lamsey, and with Hector Bellin's future at the club far from certain and a viable replacement being in the form of Brighton and Hove Albion's Tarek Lamsey, the Gunners are reportedly keeping tabs on the 20-year-old with a keen interest. And with Tarek Lamsey, someone that switched from Chelsea to Brighton and has been in good form for Brighton and he could be a possible long-term replacement to Hector Bellerin. In the right centre-back position, it could be in the form of Bayer Leverkusen's Edmund Tapsoba, who is also on Miklotetta's radar as the Spaniard seeks a long-term replacement for David Luiz at the back. However, a move for his signature is unlikely to come cheap, with the Bundesliga side understood to be demanding around £60 million in order to part ways with their star man. However, with Edmund Tapsoba a real good good prospect in that right centre back position, he could be there next season. In terms of the left centre back position, this will be in the form of Gabriel Magalhaes and he is someone that has had an average season for the Gunners. There were some moments where he has looked very very good on the ball, someone that looks very good aggressively, someone that had a decent amount of performances. That's what led him to win three of the Player of the Month awards for Arsenal. But he is someone that should now have that adaptation period over and done with and he has the opportunity to try and now thrive for next season and be much better. In terms of the left back position, it's going to definitely be in the form of Kieran Sandy. And I was surprised when I did another video like this when some people said that he is not as good enough. But I think he was probably, if not one of the best players in that team. He is someone that Miklotetta's team relies upon to a large extent. And there is talk before in the January transfer window, in that time coming to the summer transfer window, that Kieratini should deserve a move elsewhere. But it looks like Kieratini will be remaining with the Gunners and hopefully featuring for the Emirates next season and for Arsenal next season. In terms of the right centre midfield option, it's going to remain as Thomas Parsi. He is someone that we spent £45 million on last season, a deadline day signing. And Thomas Parsi is someone that has failed to set the world alight during his first season at Arsenal. But he will be allowed to thrive his role as an enforcer alongside the likes of Tarek Lamptey in that right back position. And in terms of Thomas Parsi, he's now had his adaptation period. He's had everything he can suffer as an Arsenal player and now it's time to thrive on and with alongside him it's going to be in the form of Eva Bersuma and the Bali International is said to be a target for the Gunners after proving his capabilities with the Seagulls catching the eye with his cultured range of passing and consistent ability to work around the high press and for me when it comes to Eva Bersuma I think he impressed in the game versus Arsenal the amount of tackles he was putting in the amount of times he's carried this Brighton side away from relegation and made them remain in the Premier League I think he's a top player and in terms of the number 10 role this could be in the form of Riyad Mahrez if Edu fails to tempt Real Madrid into selling Martin Odegaard and with his value at 50 million pounds plus will Miklos Arsenal and Edu 
even go for Martin Odegaard, even though he is assumed to be the top target. But in terms of the Algerian international, he is primarily a winger, but he's more than capable of pulling the strings as an attacking midfielder, with his flair and creativity promising to address Arsenal's lack of bites with the ball at fee. And alongside him is his Manchester City teammate, and that could be in the form of Raheem Sterling, who has been heavily criticised this season for his perceived lack of an end product. But the England winger is still a fantastic operator with the ability to lead trophy winning campaigns from the front and a move away from the Etihad Stadium could be exactly what he needs to silence the doubters with an Arsenal switch able to provide him with a fresh opportunity to be the main man. And he is someone that could be ahead of Nicola Pepe. In terms of the left winger role, someone that operates on the opposite wing to Raheem Sterling because Raheem Sterling is just as good on both wings, so is Bukayo Saka, someone that's burst onto the scenes for Arsenal, someone that is very young and is doing sensational things for the Gunners. And for me, Bukayo Saka is retaining his spot on the opposite flank to Raheem Sterling. And when it comes to Bukayo Saka, he is someone that I just admire. His ability, his drive and his love for this football club is something that makes him start next season. And in terms of the number nine, in terms of who's going to lead the line is going to be in the form of Alexandre Lacazette and he looks more likely than Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang if he stays for another season at least. Even though the Frenchman will be out of contract at the end of the campaign, so it would not be too much of a surprise to see Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang or another signing take up the attacking burden. But in terms of Lacazette and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, in terms of last season, who has had more goals this in the form of Alexandre Lacazette? He's had a better season compared to Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. So this is an exciting and scary 11 also could be with next season because they have been linked with a number of players like Raheem Sterling, Riyad Mahrez, Eva Basuma. At least five players are going to be moved into the squad. As I said, you need a massive overhaul in this squad. There are players that have been linked with moves out and there have been players that have been linked with moves in. And for me, there are a lot of players that can really change this team and challenge for those top four positions. And Mick Clotetta has a big job on his hands. But other than that, guys, remain blessed. Stay tuned for the next video and peace.